There we go. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Uh, it's Sunday Sketch, and we're back, and uh, we are focusing on what you just saw here just a second ago, Miss Meow. Uh, we have a couple of artists in the background already hanging out with April. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There we go. Okay. Didn't know if you heard me. Good. good I did. Good. <laughs> April. What's up, Shawnee? Shawnee's already here, making Hi, herself Shawnee. known. Uh, we have got Marissa Pope. Hello. Jellin, there is Marissa Pope. Now, normally this is where we would say Mike DeBalfa would be here, but he's on hiatus uh, for a little while. And uh, this is normally where we would say Mr. Ryan Kincaid is here. Uh, but he is over on whatnot, deciding to uh, uh, hang out with his family for some reason. You know, it's his kid's birthday, so we'll, we'll give him a break. And he's going to show up as soon as he can. Uh, but we do have a very special guest uh, to talk about Miss Meow tonight, as well as everything Merck Publishing. And here's Murphy. What's up? Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. Welcome to Sunday Sketching. Uh, super thrilled to have you. Uh, and um, uh, congrats on all the Merck success. I mean, it's Miss Meow right now, mm -hmm. but congrats on all the success. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit tonight because uh, I, I kind of feel like you guys uh, sort of came out of nowhere, at least in my, in my view. It was like, here's Merck Publishing. Kaboom! We're just doing shit everywhere, man. And and I love it. And and I love what you guys are doing. And I want you to tell everybody that's watching who you are, who Merck is, what you guys doing, and and just give us the, the general spiel here. Uh hi everybody. Uh, I'm Murphy. I'm editor in chief, head writer, uh COO. <laughs> I fill a lot of shoes at Merck Publishing. Um we started in 2020, uh, our whole publishing company is a product of lockdown. You know, I used to be Jamie Tyndall's convention sales manager. And uh, when cons ended, we had to figure out something else to do. Um, he and Sean Hudachko of uh, Comics Elite came up with Miss Meow and Death Rage and Catfight and kind of the, the beginnings of the Merc universe. And um, I just stuck my neck out there and said like, hey, can I, can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, so, you know, we wrote the first script for Miss Meow and that Kickstarter was just like, I was such a massive success for Miss Meow number one that um, I ended up doing this full time. And it's just been, you know, I hit the ground running and I fell in love with it so immediately that we just, you know, I I just put my whole life into it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of the way you have to do it i mean even mm -hmm. whether you're doing artists whether you're a writer whether you're you're doing all of the hats trust me i understand all of the hats yes. uh all, all of the hats you have i also have them on my rack um it's not an easy thing uh and uh and and you know i, I nothing but props to what you're doing um and, and we're gonna look at the campaign here as well as we do our uh, on our shows here while while uh, marissa and april are drawing and ryan will be around here in a bit um Tell them a little bit about Miss Meow right off the bat. And uh, what, do, what do you have left? About four days, four or five days? Four, yeah, it, it ends on, uh, I believe, Wednesday at six. or Oh, no, Friday at four. Sorry, I should know these things off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, it ends Friday at four. We have uh, one more cover that we're going to be uh, revealing this week from the man himself, the Jamie Tyndall. And it's a really awesome catfight cover. Um so Miss Meow number one. So the, the first the first issue started out as just kind of being like a big introduction to the world of Merc. Um, and you know, she's kind of got like she's got her her big bad is catfight. And then you're introduced to the Spartans, which are the, uh, pretty much are like the technological um, you know, they they've got a, a monopoly on that uh in the Merc universe. And so Miss Meow is kind of the only one that stands up to them, and she thinks that they're up to something and she is trying to figure out what that is. And for me personally, so like obviously Merc is kind of a, it's, it's an adult superhero world. Um, but, you know, we, we don't, we're not going to pigeonhole ourselves into just superhero stuff. Uh, so okay. Miss Meow in this issue, or technically the end of issue number three, took a sci-fi turn. And that's the road that we're going down for the rest of the series, which I'm, I'm really excited about. Uh, yeah, I mean superheroes and sci-fi. That's that's normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's yeah. normal. Uh, but yeah, it's it's always fun. I mean, Critter's the same way. Critter started off as very superhero-y, and then we grew into you know, there's time travel and parallel dimensions and and, and all kinds of fun, crazy stuff mm -hmm. uh, that we do with Critter. So I I totally get it. It's uh, it's great. So w with these characters, was this? Uh, you said that Hudechko and and uh, 
Tyndall came up with it. Like it's mm-hmm. there, like created by these guys. But yeah. then they decided to to hand off the, the actual writing of the stories to you, or did they have stories as well? So they have. I mean, so they they created the the characters and the kind of the initial. Like Jamie and I really did a lot of the initial world building together. Um, Jamie did all the character designs uh, for you know for the first issue. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to to writing the stories, it's really been it's really been uh, myself, and then we brought on a, another writer, um, Dolan, who who wrote Born Blood, which was our campaign in December. That was our first our first campaign to it was like oh, it was like twelve hundred dollars away from breaking hundred k. Um, <laughs> yeah, but they were talking about going to you know hiring a writer, and you know I've 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 always enjoyed creating and being you know writing and coming up with these sorts of stories. And so it just, I mean, it all, it was all, I was really lucky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right place at the right time. That's, yeah, that's, exactly. uh, that's, that's, that's the business. I mean, that's all business really, but in, in this kind of, it's all, it's, you know, I've always kind of compared like comics and doing this kind of stuff to like sports, like football, right? Like you have 32 teams, there are 32 starting spots and behind every one of those starting guys is like a hundred dudes that wants to take your spot. So, a little bit of luck, a little bit of talent, a little bit of right place at the right time, uh, mm-hmm. and and you, you get your shot. Um, as always, guys, those that are those that are hanging out here, we got Freddie, Shawnee, Mister Bishop, everybody that's hanging out. If you got questions uh, for Murphy or, or any of us as we're going, you are welcome to join the conversation. Uh, let us know if you're you're backing uh, Miss Meow or any of the the Merc stuff uh, previous, so we can. Uh, uh, and if you don't, we'll we'll certainly show you how to do that. Because you, you've got some time. So how many books? Uh, you just rattled off like four or five books. How many actual uh, <laughs> books do you guys actually have? Like titles? So we have we have three series that are running right now. Uh, Death Rage is going to be six issues. And then we're going to move on to our next series, which is Kerosene, who's like another fire character. She's actually She actually has her first appearance in Miss Meow number one. And then she's kind of hinted at uh, in the next issue coming up. Um, so death rage, miss me out, born of blood. Uh, but we already have two more that we're planning, uh, that'll probably, probably be started at some point this year. And I mean, there's, there's such a wealth of stories to be told in this universe. I mean, we'll have five by the end of the year, but there's probably going to be a lot more. So you said the universe, is this like a shared universe thing or is it like Mm -hmm. five titles, five worlds and every now and then they link, or is this literally a single sandbox that they all play in? Yeah, no, this is, we have, we have constructed a full universe, like everything. So, you know, when you look at, when you look at the Merc comics, that basic, you know, cover a retail variant, it's always a magazine cover. And that's the reason that we did that is, is that every time you see that magazine cover, you can know, okay, this is going to be Merc universe. Sure. So, you know, like fingers crossed, we, you know, get to, get to open up and, you know, start publishing other people's work. If you see the Merc publishing, you see those Merc wings on it, but you don't see the magazine cover, then you'll know like, oh, okay, this is just, this is another, this is going to be another awesome book, but it's not in Merc universe. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Tyndall, Tyndall's done those magazine covers forever. Which like, is forever. where it all started, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember, I think the first time I met him and saw him was Long Beach Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Like the very first Long Beach Comic Con, like a decade ago or wherever it was. Uh, and he had, he was doing Rolling Stones covers mm-hmm. with Wonder Woman and, and other characters on him. Yep. Um, that, that's the first time I saw all that stuff. And uh, God, that's, that is so weird that that is so... <laughs> long ago oh my god well, he, he did uh he created merc magazine to do covers of i think deadpool was the first one and then he's got a deadpool and harley he's got a psylocke so he created this fictional magazine mm-hmm. to put those anti-hero heroes on and uh like so that's what when we when we came up with this it was kind of just like a, oh we have this thing that people already recognize and like yeah. already have hung up in their house that we can use that's really good yeah that's yeah. That's that branding that we talk about every now and then here, mm-hmm. folks. Is uh, it's not just a matter of your character, uh, it's it's how they're presented too. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And we do get. I mean, we do get people that'll come in and be like, "Well, is this is this a magazine? Is it a comic? Is it you know comic size?" And you know, it's it's understandable that people would be confused about it. And I've had more than a few people think like, "Oh, well, you can't do the magazine covers, and people won't get it." And my answer to that is like, "Well, they they'll get it." The, they won't get it until they do and then once they get it they're always gonna they're always gonna recognize it you know yeah. if you're in a shop and you see a you know a line full of comics you're gonna see the magazine it's gonna stick out mm-hmm. 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 see 
See, I like it. I like it. I like it when people get it. I really like it when people get it. There's there's so much like uh, just negativity and so much like can't do it that way. And you, you got it. It's just like, no, no, you really can kind of do it any way you want to do it. And and if you're smart enough uh, to understand why you're even doing it, it can work very much in your favor. Um, doing specific types of designs on your covers, doing the magazine thing. Um, that's branding, man. Branding is, is, is really truly a thing. I mean, it's, you know, we're not seeing McDonald's and Pepsi commercials all the time for nothing. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, they do it a certain way for a very specific reason. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, we, we all can sort of take a little page out of their book from time to time. Well, and when it comes down to, you know, oh, you have to do things a certain way. If there's if there's one thing that I've learned, you know, becoming a publisher with not really having publishing background, you know, I started out like, okay, this is, you know, I was looking for a template for everything. This is how it's done. This is just, and it's, I, I realized, I realized pretty quickly, you know, in the first, within the first like six months that just because that's how it's been done doesn't mean that's how it has to be done. Right. You know, if you just copy would do the same thing everyone else is doing, then you're not going to. No one's really going to be like, oh, you know, oh, that's cool. Like, I've seen it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, my God. There's so much I want to ask you. I'm going to I'm going to jump to the crazy one that I just saw, uh, which I didn't believe until people told me is real, is that you have billboards somewhere up. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the freaking billboards. <laughs> so uh, I moved to Indianapolis uh, here about six months ago. Um, this is where Comics Elite is located in Sean Hudachko. Uh, the owner, uh, CEO of Comics Elite is our, is, you know, our co-owner. And I mean, back when we very first started, this is it. I mean, it must have been since probably right before the Miss Me on Number One campaign. Uh, he was getting some billboards for his store and he said, oh, yeah, design one for Merck. And so, you know, we, we put it up. It's actually been up there for for over a year. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. Um, I only now, just saw the picture like last month. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one of those things now that people, now that people know who they are, they see it and they're like, what? Wait a second. Like, <laughs> cause once you don't see Marvel billboards and you know, it's like comic book Kickstarter billboards. So it's, it's like, even every time I see it, like even actually earlier today, I had some friends in the car and we were driving. I was like, Oh, look guys, look like it's, it's so cool to see it up there. Just like just massive. And it, yeah, I mean, I always think about that too. I'm like, what if I put a Big Dog Inc. billboard like right here? Like, I know I drive here all the time. I see these billboards. What if I just put something there? But like, I I I can't imagine what the ROI is. Right? It's it's what do you when you do a billboard? I mean, is it for something specific? Like, do you have you know whatever it is, Merck.com, or do you talk about digital com? Like, what is it that you're trying to tell people as they're going by at 80 miles an hour? So the number one, when you put up a billboard, it, it goes through some like stringent checks. Sure. I can't put up, you know, our sexy Shikari covers or anything like that. Like that is a big no, no. Sure. So really I'm trying to put up, there's, there's not a lot of information on it. All it says is Merck publishing. It'll say the three title names and then Merck publishing.com. So that's, that's half the billboard. And then the other half it is pick. I've got, um, I've got, Ryan Kincaid up there. Uh, we've got Jamie Tyndall up there. Um, and then Carl Liversidge did a really awesome Miss Meow cover. Um, so I just took some really striking images that are still, they're still sexy, um, but they're, you know, kid friendly. Sure. Um, and it's just, that's the other half of the billboard. Cause you know, we only get, you know, we say, Oh, look at that. You know, you're gone like five seconds. Um, so it's trying to just give them as much information as we can, can in that short amount of time of these are hot women. <laughs> they look awesome. Merckpublishing.com. <laughs> like, that's, that's it. That's as much time as you get. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I go down. I don't know. Do you do a lot of cons and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, but I'm, I assume you don't do a lot of driving. I see you just fly in and out and do your oh, thing. Or do you oh, do a lot I of driving? Do. Yeah. So my, my start was, uh, was being a salesperson. I was a, I was a booth babe for many years. Um, back in 2015, I, I worked retail. I'd been eight years into retail, worked my way up to store manager and was just really unhappy with life. Um, and my dad is a, is an artist. Um, I actually have the right, uh, right there are the, uh, comics that he released in the nineties with the series called template that I'm constantly poking at him to start again. Um, but I, I went to him and told him I wanted to quit my job and go do cons with him. 
and he hooked me up with, you know, four or five artists. And I kind of just shot myself around and worked with whoever I could uh, until Jamie Tyndall picked me up. And I mean, I, I think the longest trip I ever took was a, a two week, two and a half week long road trip from Texas to Denver to Salt Lake city comic con, then up to Portland for Rose city. And then all the way back, it was very long. <laughs> So have you ever done the uh, sort of, let me think where it would have been, sort of Mississippi, Alabama, uh, down going into Florida, sort of that, that you know, down Louisiana way. Have you ever done those those little roads down there? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So that's where I always found the, the greatest assortment of crazy billboards because you would have like dozens of them going down the road and they would alternate like every time. There's a period in the road where it's like, Jesus saves. And then the next one is like sex toys at the next exit. And then, you know, you're going to hell and then, yeah, but bring a toy with you. You know, it's just like, oh my God, this is the greatest, you know, it's unbelievable what's, what's happening down there. And so um, that's where I was originally thinking like, yeah, I mean, what if you had like comic book billboards, like this has to work, right? Is there a way for you to figure out if they're even working? Like, have you ever gotten some sort of uh, a customer that was like, I saw your billboard and I went to your website or like, what's the thought process on, on the ROI no, I, I, or is it just I, for fun? I, honestly, I have no idea if how many customers we've gotten from it. Cause I, I never hear, you know, most of the time people don't like, you know, if they just go to our website and buy a comic, they don't really say anything to us right. unless it's, Hey, can I get this signed or something like that? Social Usually, media, anything where people are like, Oh, your billboard is cool. Like, well, so it's now that now that people are starting to recognize the name, it's starting to get more recognition. So I okay. feel like it's kind of almost like a like an it being up is just kind of like proving like, oh, we're we're for real. Because then people <laughs> see it and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> right. But yeah, I have no way unless I put up like a specific like you know if I did like, like a hashtag or something, right? Yeah, or if a... I did a specific like link for it, I could track mm -hmm. it. But it's we we change it. We actually just put up two new ones. Uh, replace one of the old ones and then put one up over the comics elite. Um, so we're not going to change them again, probably for another year. <laughs> Next time I'll do a link. That's wild. That's just wild. I can't, I, I, I can't comprehend it, but like, I know I want to do it. And, <laughs> and I know that, uh, especially cause you guys are, do you do it? Do you ever do any mention? I mean, obviously I would imagine people assume you're local. Like, do you, is there anything sort of like Indianapolis based or, you know, to try and like tie it in versus, you know, like you're some franchise from out of state because people really get into that whole local thing. You know, we haven't done that. Um, but I think the, there's a really interesting book called Console Wars that talks about kind of the rise of Sega um, against Nintendo. And one of the things they talked about were they were, they were trying to get Walmart to carry uh, the Sega and they wouldn't because they were so like they were so committed to Nintendo. So what they did was they just they literally turned the where that wall uh where uh walmart headquarters was into sega land and just put up billboards everywhere and they had a store right across from it and they just like they just really just put it in their face until they said like okay fine like we'll carry it and i really kind of want to do that here you know we've got the billboards people are seeing them you know maybe eventually like we've got a warehouse now that like we'll slowly that we're slowly turning into a storefront you know it's, mm -hmm. it's if we can keep expanding here and just kind of turn indianapolis into Merc land like that, mm -hmm. that would be, that would be the, like probably the coolest end game I could think of. Yeah. hundred percent. That's, that's exactly where my thought process is. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, tell everybody it's here, 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 and not like some New York place trying to advertise from out of state. It's like every time I go to a con, it invariably runs into people where they're like, so are you local? And I want to just tell them yes, because if I tell them no, they're going to be like, okay, see ya. Uh, <laughs> Cause there's just those people that are like, well, I support local. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I just drove like a thousand miles to be here. Yep. Um, maybe that's not such a big deal uh, that, that, that I'm not local, but whatever, do, do what you got to do. But that's a real thing is, is the, if you can create the community, around what's going on there mm -hmm. um and especially if you're going to start talking about doing like a retail storefront that could change the game that's mm -hmm. a legitimate game changer and i love all of that i love all of that well it's uh, one thing too every time uh not every time but a lot of times when when i tell people oh yeah i moved to, i moved to indiana they're like oh why <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Illinois. I understand. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, yeah, so it's kind of one thing that, you know, if we can transform this into, like, the real, like, the home of Merc and get that, like, recognized that way, it's kind of one of those things that maybe people won't think of Indiana and go, oh, they'll think of Indiana and go, oh, Merc. Yeah, right? we were we were kind of running into that with when we were in Illinois before my divorce and everything just went uh, and I had to move and then everything, everything was East Coast, West Coast, Mid Coast, like nothing matters yeah. anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I'm at this point where it's like I'm trying to build this local eyes anyway infrastructure um and and again you guys are just like way ahead of the game and i love i love seeing it i'm 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 on your coattails just know that <laughs> i'm riding those coattails because i love everything you guys are doing um hey i love good competition like bring it on dude i'm not even worried about the competition i like i for me it's it, it's all, the rising tide lifts all boats right oh, so yeah. if here comes Merck and and they're this small press publisher and they're doing things that are just wild and crazy and it's working that just means that that stuff will can't well, i shouldn't say it will but it can work for everybody yeah. and and even if um even if i'm not doing billboards and so on if you're out there elevating just the concept of comic books uh, on your own in, in, in your zone in Indiana, um, that there'll be a natural spread for that. You know, mm -hmm. it'll just become, Hey, yeah. Did you know there's like comic book billboards in Indiana? Oh yeah. And then somebody else is going to do it. Somebody else is going to do it. It just, it lifts everybody, even if it's just a little bit. Um, and so that's why I really like what you guys are doing. And I love hearing about the entire plan. Cause it's, it's all right. It's yes, it's yes, it's yes. Uh, so I really well, hope no, you guys can, the other cool thing about the billboards is that like most people, like most of our fans and everything, they it's it's Kickstarter. Everyone mm -hmm. knows us because we're on Kickstarter. We've got a huge presence there. We've always been there. Yeah. And they always see us there. Yeah. But the billboard is like people that would never even, people that haven't even heard of Kickstarter have now seen the name. Do you so put Kickstarter on the billboard at all? Or oh, we did. We did initially, but on the new ones, we didn't. And it's one thing that we really want to like. I'm not, I'm not advertising for Kickstarter. Like they can do, they can do their own advertising. Um, so you know, I just want, even if they don't go to the website, they see it and it kind of like puts it just puts a little, it, it's in their brain. So next time they see it, they'll be like, wait, I yeah, I saw that on the highway. Like, what is this? It's mm -hmm. it's just getting it's just getting that Merc logo, like getting that in people's minds. I'm digesting all of this. I'm digesting. <laughs> this is this is this is really great. Hey guys, I don't mean to just uh, uh, dominate this conversation. If you got questions for for Murphy or you want to talk about the book, are you guys familiar with this book? I know April, you because you had talked about Murphy doing a doing one of these shows with us uh, about a month or so ago. So I know you knew oh, Murphy. I, no, actually, I don't. Uh, it was referred to me from Marissa. I was oh okay. To get so Marissa, more good. independent female creators onto the sausage fest. So thank you, Murphy, for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for uh working on miss me out there i love how that's coming out oh yeah, it's uh, truly a pleasure <laughs> i'm um i'm looking forward to actually meeting you in person at some point so this is gonna be like super duper i'm just you know letting tom uh i don't know like harry potter just pull all the beautiful information from your you know lovely head so <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to going back to cons and getting out getting able to being able to get out there and like meet more of you guys because you know we started this. I I didn't meet most of I hadn't met most of the people I had work uh I've been working with for you know the 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 comic industry professionals and I still haven't met a ton of them. You know, we only did like four cons last year. So. Right. Well, I, I've uh, met Jamie um, back when Cactus Con was actually, you know, or Phoenix Con was actually at the Mesa Convention Center. So that was that was a real long time ago. Um, I haven't even heard of Cactus Con. That must be. Well, that, well, it's, like that. it's Phoenix Fan Fusion now. Yeah. Okay. But back when it was in Mesa, they originally had called it Cactus Con. So um, I don't know why they strayed from it, but they did. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him that one or two times um, way long ago. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just poor guy He's in like, you know, three different cities all at one time kind of thing. It's just it's a lot. <laughs> and like everybody's got shows that uh, are at the same time. There's three or four different shows at uh, the end of April and I wanted to be at all of them. I'm like, oh, so 
Yeah, there's always that uh, Memorial Day weekend. It's like, all right, choose between three right. cons and then six other pretty good size cons. <laughs> right. Oh man, isn't it something? Uh, I think I I think I finally uh, nailed down Suncoast Comic Con for for that. So, and then I found out that Tara Strong's going to be at um, at South Texas, and I'm like. Damn it, that was number two. That was number two on my list. I'm like, oh, it's fine. I, I have a thing with my little ponies. Yeah, but we're basically all gonna be at Suncoast except for Ryan. Yeah. Who's staying in staying at Planet because it's his yeah, local, yeah. it's his local thing. So we'll we'll let him do that. That's fine. Absolutely. I will also be at Planet. That's pretty much in my it's not in my backyard so much now, but definitely much easier to get to. Uh-huh. And we, you talked about earlier about driving to cons. There's one thing that I've learned, you know, I used to, I used to go do cons. Like I said, I worked for Jamie Tyndall primarily and uh, going to cons with artwork versus going to cons with comics. Yeah. The change in the weight of my inventory is ridiculous. Like flying to conventions with, with indie comics is almost impossible unless you, unless you have the ability to like ship a pallet or just ship everything. Yeah. 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 When I first started, I would take a box of comics, um, like a short box. I mean, I didn't have enough tight, I didn't have titles, so it was just a short box, but I'd just stick it in a suitcase mm -hmm. and and you know, and then pack the other top of the suitcase with clothes. But even then you had the 50 pound weight, you know, thing you had to deal with. Um it, it was crazy. And eventually I just was like, I can't, I can't fly, I don't want to ship books. So we got a van and I was I was road bound for you know forever at that point but i got to a point where you know i liked the road it it, it worked oh, yeah. for me um i mean i'm six four two hundred and some odd pounds um i don't fit in your dumb planes anymore i do not fit in your dumb planes so um you know it, it became cool because i could just be alone i could turn the music on i can literally literally write while I'm driving, you know, and then when you get to the hotel, it's like, okay, I got to write everything down. It's in my brain now before I lose it, um, which is definitely a danger. Um, but well, it's, and also it's, driving, like, uh, there's a there's a, a characters we're introducing in Death Rage number four that are these like creepy teddy bears with like human length, like arms and legs, and it's something that I saw. It's a teddy bear that I saw in a gas station that was at the ooh. checkout, and I was like, the dude that was there was like, teddy bears are really creepy, and he was like. I, okay. <laughs> like, to use this, like inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you don't. I never. You, I never would have come up with that idea if it just hadn't been for just a road trip. Like, yeah, you get to see all sorts of things, all like all over the country. Well, I just realized that I'm not drawing anything from Miss Meow. I'm drawing candy, and I'm on the wrong comic book. So. Miss <laughs> <laughs> well, Meow. Oh, she is. Okay. It's you're in the universe. <laughs> you're in the universe. That's all that matters. It's I mean, it's Miss Meow is what's running, but we're we're talking about all of Merck. So it's yeah. it's all you know, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Well, at least it's all relevant. I'm just like, <laughs> oh I, I get to throw candy again. And then we're talking, you're just talking about the teddy bears for death rage, and I'm like, oh fuck. The wrong character. <laughs> well, no, it's getting from now. Marissa. Marissa did one of my favorite covers we've ever done, uh, we've ever published, which was Catfight as uh, Cleopatra. And she drew this gorgeous tattoo on her back. It's, uh, yes. if y'all wow. haven't, yeah, haven't seen it, you got to go check it out. That's it's one of the best covers we've ever done. It, is it on this campaign? No, that was Miss Meow number two. I think it was Miss Meow number two. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I like that one too. It was my first butt cover, and I was really, really pleased with how they came out. But let me tell you, that tattoo on her back took me forever to draw. Oh my god! But I thought it came out pretty good. So it, oh yeah, the effort was definitely like definitely paid off. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited. Um, just uh, about a week ago, I. Finally, uh, bought bit the bullet and bought some pelican cases so that I can uh, transport the books uh, safely. Because my last trip wound up uh, busting my suitcase. 
Yeah, those suitcases do not live. If you can get one to last a year, that's impressive. Well, the uh, the Pelican cases have a lifetime guarantee. I'm like, oh, I'm keeping this number. <laughs> yeah, I know more than a few people that use those. I've actually got, I've got a friend that does a, a print booth that he creates a train of like six or seven Pelicans that he just straps to each other and they get smaller as the train goes back. It's like oh, uh, Terry, smaller, right? But, yeah, yeah. 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 So ducklings like trailing behind him yes well he unfortunately was right in front of me for the elevator and i was like are you well okay <laughs> i'll hold it for you i'm not sure what a pelican case is it's a imagine it's like a oh. media thing. it's a hard a hard uh kind of square ship it's like a shipping tub pretty much but it's, it's made for media travel for like cameras and stuff so it's really great for comics yeah are we doing two characters marissa no you can, you can google it i'm doing this thing that like todd knock does so like he draws a uh, ah. one standing character and then a bunch of little headshots so i'm just gonna do candy and a bunch of little headshots we got the fancy thing going on I want to do something. I do, I, Tom, I do the same thing every Sunday. What episode is this? Like episode like fifty. Nineteen. I've done the same thing fifty times. Nineteen. So. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. You did that one poison, or not poison ivy, uh, Princess Python. You did that really long. Oh yeah, I did tall that one. thing. So you, you had that at least one variation. Yeah, Mike's got that hanging up at his house. Oh, he still he he still has it. Huh? Okay. All yeah, right. I'm like. I'm like, you really want to keep it? He goes, yeah, no, I really like it. And I'm like, okay. You guys, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, we had one night where uh, we didn't have a, a, a sponsor that we were doing. So we just did a, a free-for-all and, and had some uh, suggestions to the crowd. And um, mine was actually Princess Python. I've always been a Princess Python fan. So I was really excited that somebody got to do it. Uh, and and they got to watch it happen live. It's like being at a con and just watching, you know, people draw uh, is is awesome. So that's that was kind of the whole point of doing this show. Is people like to watch the art happen. Uh, you know, we do the Artist Alley Shopping Network, um, and and Marissa and April are both on there. So is, so is Ryan. Uh, and uh, I was like, well, why don't we take this to a, to another level and see if we can figure out how to put some eyeballs on some projects. And uh, and so Sunday sketching was born, and there goes April with her tape. Oh, we got glitter coming soon. What's what's happening? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna airbrush the out the background. Airbrush. Yeah. Airbrush. But I'm not. Space. I'm not going to airbrush anything. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to, my love. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just being a little that. extra. <laughs> No, I tried airbrushing um, in high school because, like, it was like part of like one of our experiments for like art class or whatever, and I did not have a fun time. I was like, I never want to fucking do this again. <laughs> so I I don't actually know how to airbrush airbrush, but um, the Copics uh, have that uh, airbrush attachment, which yeah. oh, I love that so much. I do, I do, I do, I do. It makes me so happy. <laughs> well, you always tend to do something, whether it's the airbrush, whether it's glitter, whether it's, didn't you? I mean, you've done a lot of weird stuff on these shows. I, I, I do yeah, like April's the super, weird. April's super creative. <laughs> the The trick is to get it uh, done in, you know, the two hour time frame, though. That's, that's always, like, there's only one that I had to, like, finish off air. I know Ryan's going to come on and he's going to be like almost done because he just like he drew it all day long. He's just going to be like, oh, yeah, this is easy. I'm I, I got like 10 minutes left on it. We're finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got I've got him working on something. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that's what he brings brings on. Well, we can tell him to bring it on if uh, if, if you're OK with it being seen. Oh, yeah. Um, that's fine. Otherwise, generally, he'll he'll do stuff on like sketch covers and so on. But um if uh, if you want to show it off, you're, we can we can definitely tell him to bring it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll, I'll shoot him a message so whenever he's ready. Uh, let's see. 
I think I'm actually supposed to talk to Sean Murphy about doing an exclusive sometime in April. I Hell think, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm, I, I, I have to message him. I messaged him like at the end of December. I was like, hey, just wondering, like, because like, just seeing if he had any projects or anything like lined up. And he's like, well, this is really far out. So message me when it's closer to time. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're also just, uh, I've got, I mean, I've got people that, you know, I've got artists that, you know, I'm on their schedule for like months out. And then I've got my handful of people that I'm always just like, like Ryan this week. I was like, hey, can you give me a cover done in the next like eight days? <laughs> He's like, yeah. what do you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always get nervous with him because I, I, I tapped him on the shoulder a few weeks ago and I was like, uh, I need it like March. He's like, yeah, okay. March mm -hmm. seems fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Thump. I'm so interested in what you were about to do with this. I know, right? With the tape. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> it's all about you, April. Excellent. It's okay. I've drunk the just the right amount of coffee. It's fantastic. My premium Antis egg hatchling, and then I realize I haven't even planted the seeds yet for the actual garden. So my hands are all like stained from doing a little bit of gardening today. <laughs> oh, I love my little praying mantis hatchlings. I cannot wait to see them emerge. Audrey, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much, but they just kind of eat each other and they thin it down until there's five. <laughs> Hardcore. No. no, 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 no. What happens is like the they scatter, um, and and the wind blows them and they go forth and be amazing. Some of them, I'm sure, do get ate by each other. And then I've caught a couple of those little gecko lizard fuckers that get all all up in there and start eating my babies. And that's just not cool. How do you right. get into the world of, of praying man type? Uh, Amazon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for uh, an opportunity to like, you know, kill mosquitoes, but not use pesticides. And so I've gotten to where I'll, I'll order them. They come in a little, like, uh, like a little nugget. And they uh, hatch after a couple of weeks um, once they sense that the temperature is adequate for a couple of weeks. Um, so I think what they do is they uh, people go out and um, find the, the sacks and then just put them in the refrigerator until somebody orders them. Interesting. Yeah. So, so, oh, yeah. It's way cool. Um, but you can also use like ladybugs and stuff for aphids and whatever else. It's, it's pretty neat. I was going to say but, for bugs, don't they generally tell you to get some bats, put, put some um, bats around your house? Yeah. But I mean, I obviously live in an apartment complex. Oh, and, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of different. <laughs> I can just I see that. Know. You got a bunch of bats hanging off your balcony. Your neighbors are like, what is happening over there? <laughs> well, that's man bat. That's Batman. And, you know, <laughs> Nightwing. <laughs> He's my favorite. <laughs> the the kids around would love you. Oh, yeah. Well, no, actually, they really don't. We had this really cool uh, orbs weave spider that was like hanging out. She's beautiful. Um, and then the kids would come by to like ring the doorbell to have my kids go out and play. And I'd be like, watch out for the spider web. And that the spider web, like if this is the corner and this is where the door is, the spider web came down and these kids would miss it by an inch. <laughs> like don't get in the spider web. And they'd forget about it every day. <laughs> like, oh my God. You know, one, one day this kid forgot and I just heard shrieking outside <laughs> oh i was just dying yeah found it poor poor uh, pizza delivery guy also 
like, oh, no, here, ma'am. And like, don't, don't even worry about the tip. I'm out. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I sense inspiration for a spider character for Murphy is happening. Right? <laughs> oh, totally cool. Well, why don't we take a minute here and let Murphy tell you all about what's happening on the campaign. Oh. And uh, so I'll just kind of scroll through and you can tell us what we're looking at and what what uh, what we need to know. And uh, we'll just kind of run through it. So 680 backers already. That's badass. Mm -hmm. uh, 41,000. Well, well overfunded. Again, super congrats. Um, by the way, I'm super jealous about this artist that you have right here. I love this, uh, love this image. He is. Yeah. He, this was actually the, the first, uh, the first cover he was ever hired for. Uh, it's Damn. not the first one published because we actually published him on our last campaign. Uh, Cyrus remains. He, uh, is incredibly talented, brand new on the scene. Uh, you should definitely, you should definitely hit him up. I mean, his we will see the full cover when you mm -hmm. when you get a little bit uh scroll down a little bit but i mean she's her body form is just gorgeous so this is our like i was talking about before we've got the magazine magazine retail uh retail covers uh this is chris enot who did the original design for miss me out spacesuit for a comic palooza exclusive uh last year um so we had him he had he'd given me a couple of rough designs and i went with another one for that but said save save this <laughs> we're gonna use that for miss me out four um, so he's been he's been sitting on this one for for a long time, and if you're new to Merck, the the magazine the magazine articles will give you a little bit of a little bit of a you know kind of teaser for what you're gonna get inside the comic, you know just like a like a regular magazine. <laughs> so we get right into the variants. So we do a nice and a naughty version of of every cover. Um, the so obviously you've got. Um, well, nice and naughty trade and virgin, I should say. They're not all naughty, um, but we do lean most towards that. So Chrissy not, obviously. Uh, Shikari right there is obviously, I mean, they are a massive hit in indie comics right now. I can't imagine why. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the way that he the way that he works is so insane. So like when like this comes, so when he when he when he starts out with a with a form, they're completely nude. So like this cover, we got that in and I was, I opened my phone and you never expect to get something like that from your boss. <laughs> I opened it and I went, whoa. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, then, you know, then he kind of builds up like, like clothing, you know, per, per whatever your request is. But I mean, mm -hmm. watching, watching Shikari work is so incredible. He's, it's just so awesome. Um, and he does these little details. Like I love the creepy cat behind and then there's like, a uh, grumpy cat on like a like a one of the pictures in the background. It's the, his attention to detail is fantastic. Paolo Pentelena, uh, this is a third of a series of covers that he's doing for us that all kind of have this um, this kind of theme of the character just looking very looking very um, godlike, and then kind of just like little little tidbits behind them that have to do with their character. So this one is called Rejoice. There's Worship of Hat Fight, and then there is uh, Praise of Candy that was on, that's shipping right now from Death Rage. Yeah, I like that. Um, I don't know what you'd call it, but the background design. Um, mm -hmm. There's got to be a term for, for what that is. I, I keep wanting to say like Art Nouveau, but that's not what it is. But mm -hmm. in that concept, but yeah, I like that. That's cool. It like it frames her, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's like you know the the first one that they did has like like little teddy bears and stuff behind, and then the um, the cat fights got cats and like death rage little like toys and stuff. It's yeah, it's 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 super creative. I love I love the designs. Was this his idea to do this, or did you guys kind of toss the idea at him? Uh, he had done a, I believe it was a black cat piece. Um, that was very similar to these. And so I, you know, I was just looking through his Facebook and I was like, wow, like, I really like this. Could you do something like this for us? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Paolo's fans are they're they're They love him. Um, sure. And so, you know, that first one was, was a hit. And so I, I want to, I want to get one of these really every one of our characters. I'm excited for, I'm excited for the day that I get to do a, a death rage like this still with like the pose and like the, like proper and like puffing his chest out. It's <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> 
So Elias Chatutis, this is actually a funny story. We this cover is uh nearly two years old. Um, it was hired out by somebody that no longer works with Comics Elite and hasn't worked with Comics Elite for a year. And so I was just going through and looking through all of our old messages just to um, just really to see, I was actually trying to find a specific image and I just happened upon this. And I was like, oh my God, I messaged Elias. I was like, do you, do you have this still? Like, do you have the high res for this? And he was like, oh yeah. And like sent that off. So this, this one has been just waiting to see the light of day for two years. And it's, I, I don't know how we forgot about it. It's gorgeous. It's yeah. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. We just got our first Elias cover for Oz last year. So mm -hmm. I was like super, I was like one of those bucket list guys. I was like, got to do it yeah. and finally got it done. So I was, I was super happy. This one's, that's gorgeous. It's fantastic. Is she, yeah. She's so beautiful. And then, okay. We were talking about Cyrus remains. So this was the first cover he ever did for us. Uh, I had him do a second one underneath, which is the cat fight. So you've got rock on and then you've got the bird. And uh -huh. his, yes. Oh, got it. his body forms are just so they're so perfectly just a little bit unreal. Like the, just like the voluptuous hips and everything. I just, I I'm so in love with his artwork. Yeah. When I, when I saw this one, I was immediately, I was like, who is it? How do I find them? Uh, want this, want this, want this. So yeah. <laughs> and then, so you got, uh, you got two there. That's nice. That's a great, that's like, that's a great, um, you know, sort of the good and the bad. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. I think he did a really good job of kind of getting like both of their, even though they both have the same expression, you can understand kind of their personalities, even with even sure. with their faces being kind of very just um, kind of secretive. <laughs> yep. Mr. McKay. Yep, Bill McKay. Uh, we pretty much always do a cosplay variant. Uh, Black Hat, Miss Meow, easy, easy one to one. Uh, <laughs> um, so this one, this one was fun. I think this is actually a piece that he did for Sean that Sean had just been sitting on. Um, so it was, I think, I think a great addition to the campaign. Oh, John. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I had John messaged me, uh, like two weeks ago and just sent me a drawing that he was doing of Miss Meow. And he said, Hey, I did this. Do you want to use it? And I can't tell you how like honored I am <laughs> just to get that message of like, Oh, you drew, you drew my character and you're asking me if I'd like to use it. Yes, yes, I would, please. <laughs> uh, and Colors by Sanju, who's always, always just making masterpieces, like, one after another. So that's that. We just added that one on, um, and then hopefully tomorrow we'll have we'll have our last our last variant set from uh, Jamie. And we got some foil versions. Mm -hmm. Is there foil versions? Oh, so just the four. So it's not everything. It's just the four. Exactly. Yeah. We've got foil and then you can get like a set of all the foils and then there's, and then we do the metal variants, same thing just for, um, and, but you can go actually the set of that is totally sold out. Oh yeah. Well, fine then. I won't <laughs> buy one from you. Well, there is a way still to get those. I let me, it wasn't sold out. Yeah, we still have, so we do 25 of the, the full collectors. So it's like the set where you get everything in the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got seven left and those, I mean, they pretty much always sell out. So usually, usually we have like the last two or three sell in the last like maybe eight hours of the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're, if you're interested in just getting all of this at a, like a really good discount, um, that complete set is definitely, I, I, I'm go out of my way to make sure it's a really good deal. What what is happening? Uh, what is this pink? So that's for? the one that we that's the one that we haven't released yet. So that's gonna oh be, okay right sure yeah it's gonna be Jamie's cover. Got it got it got it. Got I it. usually put a question mark on it. I don't know why. Right, that would have made sense. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. It's like oh, it's just like a filler pink filler square. Okay, got it. <laughs> Makes sense. Virgin sets. Get the whole shebang, the full so, meow. Yeah, the trade, the trade and virgin set. It's it's get all of the regular comics, so it doesn't mm -hmm. include any of the foils or the medals. Mm -hmm. um, and then the full meow that is everything. Get it all, amazing, amazing. Free rewards, for physical baggers, the push goals. How many have you unlocked? Uh, but I think seven, there's still one on there that I haven't physically put my unlocked on. 
Um, the campaign sticker is one that I, I've, we've done that since the very beginning. I love those campaign stickers. 40K mm -hmm. is now unlocked. Okay. Mm hmm. The bookmark. The up bookmark. Next. Yeah, the e not the moon the the greeting card the postcard. I'm really excited to to design. Uh, if we unlock that, it's going to be fun. Metal prints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're new to Miss Meow and you know you want to get a variant, but you you don't you know you want to save it to collect it, we do the retail cat up. Um, which is all four, all four of the retail issues. Um, or if you go to MerkPublishing.com, we have uh, sets for all of our retail books on there as well. Lanyards, cosplay suits. That's that's smart. That's really good. I like that. I like that. Yeah, we. That's actually been that's been my bread and butter at cons. Uh, the last convention I did um, was. Oh man, I. I'm spacing on what the actual convention was, but you know, we, I did, and I, I pushed the, you know, I pushed the cosplay suits. I put one on myself at the booth, and by the end of the weekend, we had like four Miss Meows running around. Um, I and for some of the, the guys, guys really like the Miss Meow suit. Like I have a Death Rage suit, and they're like, no, I want, I want to be Miss Meow. So we're probably gonna go and do a do a redesign of of a, of a male version that doesn't have the, you know, the the boob shadow. No, you're doing it wrong. Nope. Nope. No. They want the, trust me, they want the boobs. They want the boobs. They want the boobs. I guarantee you a hundred percent. They want the boobs. Yeah. Boob envy. I, I would not change a thing. <laughs> if they're already doing it, you've already won the game. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. You do not away. need Mr. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Meow. Man, I do like that name though. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? Is there, like, is yeah, there a uh, Mr. You, Meow? You can have that. You can have that. You can have Mr. Meow. <laughs> so the rest of these are just, yeah. If you if you haven't, if you just found us on Kickstarter, those these are past push goals. You know, mm -hmm. we always we always over order, you know. It's yep. fun to have this stuff at cons. And, you know, so if you want, you want a pack of buttons, if you want that stuff that, you know, free stuff backers have gotten before you've got that option. Good. Well, officially spoilers territory. Okay. Yeah. If you're Spoiler watching, territory. you haven't seen, you haven't read Miss Meow before. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, so this, like I said, this is, this is our sci-fi, uh, you know, we tangent that we're going down. You find out at the end of last issue that Miss Meow was a clone. And then you go off to uh, her secret moon base on the dark side of the moon, dark side of the meow. I put on the cover, <laughs> and you get to see her process. Um, Catfight, she found out about this. It was the big reveal is that she she like came and she like chloroformed Catfight, and then uh, had all her and all of her minions taken back to her mansion. And she wakes up, and all of them are acting like they don't like the last day didn't happen. Um, so she's the only one that remembers that she she shot Miss Meow in the head. She was dead and she came back. Um, so you know, I mentioned before that the Spartans are are kind of have a monopoly on technology and mercs in this world. And she works with the Spartans. So uh, since Meow has been trying to take them down, she's going to go straight to Leonidas and try to convince him of that this technology exists. Um, but Leonidas is going to be like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and this from the from the very beginning, the 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 story of Miss Meow number one has been she's trying to get the helmet of Leonidas, and in the uh, issue number two, these uh, this group of kids, their uh, their group is called Bubblegum Blitzkrieg. Uh, they ended up getting into um, Area Fifty One and getting it before she could, and so now she is going to uh, get to them and try to finally get the helmet of Leonidas. Hey, I know her. <laughs> <My go -to>. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Jamie Tyndall, my second dad. Sean is slowly becoming my third dad. <laughs> that is that is Dolan. Uh, he has a job uh, that makes it so he wants to kind of keep his comic creating um, mysterious. So <laughs> sure, I, I understand. We've got a few people like that. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Joel Rodriguez, he has been our letterer from the very beginning. I love working with him. I finally got to meet him in Florida uh, last year. Really, really awesome dude. Victor Serra. So we work all of our all of our interior artists are uh, represented by Stone Tower Studios. 
Um, so Victor Serra works on Miss Meow. He was working on another comic for us uh, that was put on hold, um, but we'll hopefully see the light of day sometime soon. Gaston Zabeldia was our only colorist that worked on all of the comics up until uh, Born of Blood, uh, our new series. Uh, he is he is just fantastic. I mean, all of these guys are incredible. I, I really love working with them. And then Stone Tower Studios, uh, represented by uh, Lucas uh, Arudia. Um, that he is my man. Uh, I, I I don't talk directly with any of our artists. It's it's everything's through him, and he has been extraordinary to work with. And that's Ryan. That's our new shipping guy. We finally, finally got uh, our Merc warehouse set up, and we are self-sufficient. Uh, he's the newest member of our of our little family. Ryan, you are a star. <laughs> well, I'd say it looks uh, like a pretty okay campaign. Yeah, pretty okay. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> pretty great. Pretty great. Honestly. Thank you. Um, like I said, I've been watching you guys do this stuff for a while, and I'm 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 blown away by it all. So, um, well, well done, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody needs to go check it out. Let's see. Let's go back to the top here. Uh, four days left. That means what? What did we decide that meant? Friday. Yeah, Friday at four o'clock Eastern. Uh, we're gonna do a. We always do like a live. Um, you know, the last hour of the campaign, we'll go live and do probably probably do a giveaway and, you know, just talk about, talk about the campaign and everything. Hi, Albert. <laughs> um, yeah. And then once this, once this ends, we've got two weeks off and we will be back on March 9th with death rage. Number four. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's great. I love it. I love it. I love see it. I love awesome it. airbrush action there. Oh yeah. Let's get back. Let's see what the heck, uh, April's doing over here. Oh, it's already April, done. Tell us what's happening. It's it's already done. Like I gotta. It's done. We missed it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that is too cool. It's Miss Meow in space. So fitting. Uh, yeah. It was kind of <laughs> like that opening. Uh, that opening scene. It inspired me. That and I just did. Uh, 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 George Weber's Lost in Space or Girls Pin Up Thing in Space. So well, I am I'm so I, I love anything space. Oh, <laughs> so I this know, is right? mm -hmm. yeah. this is very cool. Oh look. I made it. I made it. I made it. Hey. Hey. What up, Murph? What's up, Ryan? Hello, Matt. Hello, April. And hi. I made it. So I told him to bring the cover. I don't know if this is the cover or not. Yep. Yeah. This is the cover. Okay. This, Marissa, this you're, you're not alone now. <laughs> this is the cover. You see, I'm not yeah. alone now. Yeah, I've got. He's working on candy over here too. Oh, okay. Are you live on the other ah. side now? I am. Go back. Life can go back to normal. So how was the show? Uh, out by 11. It's uh, exhausting, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only because we've been not, like nonstop for the last four days here with kids and sure. it, it's Aiden's birthday party is going on upstairs right now. Um, yeah, it's, it's nuts over here. We went, so sleepy. <laughs> we went axe throwing yesterday or today. I went top golf with my brother yesterday. So I'm just like, I'm out on beat. Trying to catch up to everything is harsh. I really appreciate you doing this for me. Of course. Murphy, yeah. Hi, hi. Is that is that the boss lady? That, that's the boss lady. <laughs> I miss you guys. I miss you, sweetie. <laughs> when do we get to see you? Uh, well, we were just talking earlier about I'll, I'll be at Planet Comic Con. Yes, you can come over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not Yay. have to not have to drive back four hours like immediately. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. Nope. <laughs> you can just come hang out. It's fun. Four hours. What's what's the uh, what's the conversation been? What are we talking about? It's been everything. I've been I've been fangirling on Murphy and and uh, <laughs> and everything that she's doing because I've never met her before, and I've been watching all the stuff. We just did the campaign rundown and uh, saw all the books and 
uh, you know, it's just been Mur it's Murphy's just been the our, shit. our chit chat. Yeah, that's what I'm figuring out. Like, uh, dude, I love yeah. her. She's amazing. Mur Murphy's the shit. Now I get scared when I see her name pop up on my screen. Though I'm like, oh shit, what do I got to <laughs> do? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I need it to be done. Up. I fessed up to your uh, your rush cover earlier. <laughs> really wrong. <laughs> No, yeah, Ryan's been. I, I've been, you know, I've been friends with Ryan for for years before all this stuff. I, uh, I worked, I worked his booth at was it WonderCon? WonderCon, yeah, the last one we had. So twenty nineteen then, yeah. Yeah. And that was back when I was still trying to, still trying to sling metal comics. <laughs> yeah. But he's been. I mean, I think Ryan's done. A, you've done a cover on every every book that we've put out. I think so. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was he was my one of my one of my cheerleaders when we first started all this. Still is. I got it. I got it. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, you're got, not you're yeah. not the only one to drop a fast cover on me this week, so it's okay. Oh. Aww. I got one for. I got one actually for Planet that no one will know about until for a few more weeks. Okay. Um, but it's a yeah, it's a planet exclusive. The dope planet exclusive. Uh, yeah, it'll, when when it act, when word gets out, it's actually like for the indie people, it's huge. Uh, but I was definitely like, fuck, really? Okay, I gotta do this one, and I gotta do this one, and I gotta do this one. Yeah, well, Marissa's doing one for me. Last minute, sort no, of. No, not not last minute, but I swear <laughs> to God, it's gonna. I have I have seven covers I have to do in March. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if it makes you feel any better, I did three in the last three days. <laughs> what? I, no. I did three covers in the last I three days. I can't as fast as you. No one can. No one. Well, no I mean, in my defense, I get you, so. I, I get them all laid out first, and then I go to town. So it takes me a little while to get them laid out, and then I just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, if I do, um, if I can like sit down and like do like all of my layouts, I'm sure I can get it done. But I'm so, I'm so precise about yeah. like where I want to do stuff, and I erase and I put down, I erase and put down, I erase and put down, and it's just, it's like, it's like this, this, this whole thing. And I need to learn how to let go, and I can't do it. I can't let go. Oh, I've learned to just like, hey, uh, I don't have the ability to bullshit. Like, I don't have time. So like, here's four layouts. What looks good to you? Those look good to you. All right, we're out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send three or four, three or four thumbnails to whoever, whoever, and let that like, and let them pick, and then uh, we just kind of go from there. But still, I'm still uh, this last like th this last cover I did. I'll show you when we get off. This last cover that I did, um, it has been a total like mind fuck. Just because right. it's been it, it, it's just been so mentally taxing. It's got so much stuff in it that I haven't done before, and I've done it like over the course of like three days. So I'm proud of I'm proud of what it is for um, for never have done done it before. So I'll cut myself some slack, but even still, I'm like I'm exhausted right now. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I feel you. But it's okay though. It's good. I I feel you. It's it's rough. It gets tough. Build character is what it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exactly what we're calling it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my my depression built character. <laughs> you shouldn't be depressed. Have fun with it. Go, you, yeah. you get you get two moments to go holy fuck, and the rest of the time like all right, let's do it. Yeah, that's when you put on more coffee and gain inspiration through heavy metal. If coffee, you mean Jack and Coke, then okay. <laughs> if you mean coffee, you know, no. Yeah, come on. Correct. Is that the drink oh, at the, the birthday party? Yeah, that's how I'm getting through this birthday party. <laughs> but we, I mean, we, we had so much snow uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning that Wednesday when the kids were over, like they would, they just came over after practice. Um, they canceled school like Wednesday night. So then they were like, Oh, we're just going to stay here. Like, so we oh, had kids Wednesday yeah. night and then we had kids Thursday night and we had no kids Friday night, but friends came over and we drank all night. And then we yeah. had kids Friday night 
and we had kids, or no, not Friday night. We had kids last night, and we have kids again tonight. Any uh, any interesting axe related stories? Uh, n- uh, no, nothing. Nothing bad happens. The only thing with kids that are hyperactive is we kept having to tell them you have to wait until the other guy throws their axe before you can go pick up yours, or you're going to end up with yes. their axe in your skull. <laughs> Like we literally were like, we're gonna put strings on you guys and it's hold like, on to them. It's like bowling, it's but show. you know, you could die. A bowling ball could do some damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, the kids did good. Like it's funny watching all these teenage kids learn how to axe throw, and all of a sudden they're hitting bullseyes. Like, all right, now we taught you how to use a deadly weapon. Apparently, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good self defense. <laughs> self defense. Although I will say, if you've never gone axe throwing, you should because it's fun as hell. It's been on my list. There was a place. There's a place not far at all from my office. So I'm thinking maybe on maybe on a, a day that we have like an early Kickstarter uh, uh, ending, we'll go over and celebrate with axe throwing. Yeah, it's it's so much fun, and you can just get some shit out. Just launch the axe into the bullseye or you know picture somebody's skull whatever works for you i've seen more than enough videos of those things hitting wrong and bouncing back well i mean unless you're retarded with <laughs> we're not going to say those those words you shouldn't be standing close enough you shouldn't be standing close enough that it can bounce back and hit you like, cause we've had them bounce back, but not so hard that it actually makes it back to where you're standing. Okay. Clearly I'm getting yelled at if you can't hear it. <laughs> is it, is it bedtime? It, no, it's just because there's so many people here that he's trying to hide downstairs, but he wants to play. Oh, he's very, he's conflicted. Yeah. Yep. Look, he's trying to bite my sleeve right now. <laughs> yeah, it's Chewy. Ollie's asleep on the floor. Oh, Chewy's jumping up trying to bite my sleeve. Look at everyone go. Well, <laughs> just like that. There's no more Chewy. Did he fall down a hole or something? No, he's just staring at me. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll start again. He's plotting. Yeah, it'll start again. Well, that or he'll just do that. To... Marissa knows. He just does this low grumble because he mm-hmm. didn't get his way, and he's basically pissed off. Mm-hmm. And he'll lay at my feet like dick. <laughs> yeah, that's what he just did. He growled and laid down. Feel you, little buddy. So everybody that's watching, have you guys all pledged for uh, for Miss Meow yet, or previously? Yeah. Yes. I mean, they only have 680 backers, so they could really use a few more. <laughs> Damn, is that what it's at already? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, and this one's weird. Like we have a uh, so we have you know you get to see how many people are following your campaign, and. Uh, we're already at the conversion rate of like followers that have backed the campaign that usually we don't get to until the end. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. You don't know if it's going to grow from there or you just, you, you already tapped out. (laughs) Hopefully not. I think that this, you know, it's a lot of people do wait for that last cover to come through. Um, So I'm and Jamie always brings, he always brings his people. Yeah. There's always something that pops in at the end, like, oh, I got to have it. Mm-hmm. Ryan, I love the lips there. Sweet. I'm not going to lie. I haven't done this angle in so long that I was like, oh, God, is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> That's coming out really well. That upshot is always a nail biter. Because there's no there's no way to make a nose look attractive, pencil wise, when you're looking up it. <laughs> you're usually relying on your colorist to be like, okay, so she's looking up. Let's add the shadows and light and stuff. I feel like we found a new like. Everybody do the nostril cover now. 
Mm-hmm. Don't you do that. We'll just we'll just create a new a whole new thing. Like everybody's gonna do the nostril. Like butts are out. Nobody wants butts anymore. Everyone wants the nostril. <laughs> I still listen to Sir Mix a lot, sir. So oh. um, baby has to have back. <laughs> I'm definitely, you almost always see a nice booty cover on our stuff. And that's, that's, that's mine. That's for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love a good butt. Mm-hmm. Waiting for the cover with nose hair. <laughs> see, that's could be, that that's your variant. You have your regular yeah. and then you have your nose hair. I think Murphy would fire me yeah. at that point. So like, Ryan, come on. What were you drinking that night? <laughs> <laughs> nose hair. What's the matter with you? I'd have to make a whole character that's developed around that, like Rapunzel, except for its nose hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, their su- that's their superpower. Uh, they can just go really long nose hair and control it. <laughs> well, Medusa, right from 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 Marvel, do her nose hairs have like like her hair does? I don't. I don't think it's all her hair. I think it's, <laughs> it's just, just hair on, on the on head. head. That would probably be helpful. But I don't really know. Oh if that's true or not, but I'm sure there's a site for that. <laughs> we don't want to be on that site. I'm that's sure just... that has been answered somewhere, and you're right. I don't really want to know. <laughs> yeah. That's like mall rats and 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 Cody. Or is it Cody yeah. talking to talking to Brody. Stanley? Yeah, Brody. Yeah, is the is thing, the thing drunk made yeah. out of rock? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, if you want that answer, you can look at Nia Rufino's sketchbook. The infamous. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember which sketch. one I did in hers. I don't think it was things though. All the answers are there. Is yeah, this whatever. a themed book that she has? They have Correct. people do. Yes. Ah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I'm not one of those. Mine's not something, to something to behold. Yeah. I think it's funnier, like the amount of people that she's got doing it. Some of the names that did it, they were like, "Hell yeah, I'm in." Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And on normal basis, you wouldn't keep they wouldn't be caught dead drawing like some of that stuff. Some of that always cracks me up because you know damn well, like everybody that started like like, hmm, I could draw my own set of boobs. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Feel like home alone. I'm actually doing it now. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You better she come said a reverb. <laughs> April comes with her own reverb. Yeah. I do. I'm sorry. It's been so quiet for She's so like long. She's like all amped up. We've passed the comfortable coffee threshold. You can't let your hands shake, so it's just gonna all come out through the the vocal cords. <laughs> so for those that missed it earlier, you are getting a little preview of a actual cover in uh, Ryan's case tonight. Yep, this is going to be Death Rage number four. Uh, our popular gunslinging crazy character, Candy. And that's going to be on Kickstarter on March 9th. That's when that one launches, March 9th? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we kept I kept slipping back to later and later in the month. So I, I gotta get back to I gotta get back to launching launching closer to the beginning so we don't so we don't end up missing a month. I can't keep up with all that, man. <laughs> We're still waiting on con artist too, Ryan. Um <laughs> you yeah, plenty yeah. of time. Plenty it's of done. Time. It's done. <laughs> it's sitting. It's sitting. I, I'm making the Kickstarter now, but oh, just push go. Push it right now. Yeah, just launch it. It'll work. I You'll swear be fine. It'll work. You'll be fine. <laughs> Fill it in as you go. You can just put like a bunch of blank questions, like like a like a make make like a mystery campaign. It's uh you know oh my just, God. Put, just put names. You know, it'll just be like oh this guy and this guy and this guy and this girl. Yeah. And that would just, be, that would actually be a fun through this cover. <laughs> How, how much trust do people have in the, the name right. of your company that they'll just throw money at you? That's right. That's see, right. See what they get. I mean, it's pretty much the same as mystery mystery boxes. Yeah. 
it would sure make our lives a lot easier if we could just put up some you know white pages and say you know it's you know what they do you'll be fine <laughs> you're gonna you know it. what's about to happen just yeah. put the money here <laughs> A third head dropping in. Marissa yeah. is going all in tonight. I wish I would move this one up a little more so I could have more space for her front facing one. But now you can just have the hair of the one above her like frame her head, like through her head, like. Oh well, no! Back. Like for the your third one, you can have the the hair of the second one kind of come down around her. Oh yeah, like this way. Or this way. I need yeah, to set up some of the some of the white space down here. I'll tell you what, Tom, some the, those things on, on the whatnot, like the group that we did that with, the Pro Bowl. Um, it's really fun because everybody hypes the next person up. But man, trying to keep up with their schedule, like I think I got 200 messages a day in, in the group. We have to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. We got to do that. I'm like, dude, I, I, I don't have time for that. I did. I, yeah, no, I, I can't I, do I can't schedule. Like I was planning on digging out right when we started and they're like, no, you got to be there for the whole time. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't have that much stuff. I, or I didn't plan that much stuff. Oh, that sounds entirely stressful. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't really do schedules, guys. Yeah, I only, like I've only that. done two shows so far. Um, I did, you know, in like two months, I've done two shows there. Um, yeah. They've both been fun, um, but it's like, oh my god, I, 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 I mean, I love the enthusiasm of that group and the the people that do that app. It's it's really yeah. great. Um, but yo, I got my own shit to do. Um, yeah. So I'll I'll dive in when I can. Uh, cause I want to support that app and, and I think it's got a lot of great potential, but, um, that was I my got, thing is I, I like the app and I like the people. Yep. Um, and I'm all for like, you know, pumping everything up, but man, like most of everybody, they're retailers on there. So like they're driven to do all of it. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm an artist, you know, full time. Like this is like secondary to me. So I don't, I don't have the time to put a whole show together in the week. Like I don't, I just kind of literally threw stuff together this morning. Yeah. When we did, when we did ours, I literally just had, I had Ryan grab one of every single thing that we had and just well, like, we just kind of ran through it until people stopped until people stopped like bidding. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. I mean, I like it. We're probably going to do, we're going to try to do like maybe one a week, but they're going to be like more focused. Like this week, I think we're going to do a miss meow sale like then we'll do it'll probably just be whatever campaign we have running but yeah thomas i know i talked to the guys uh months ago and i know they are working on a desktop version of whatnot like it'll that was like the desktop. first thing i said when i came in i was like can i just use my computer i don't want to use everything on my phone yeah um so yeah I think that was a lot of our concerns and it's not it available now but it yeah. is like they are working on that Function. Some of us old people, you know, and our, our people with giant fingers that don't want to monkey around with their phones. Well, yeah. I mean, it's hard to, if you're, especially if you're doing like the quick ads, like on the fly. Yeah. That's impossible for me. There's no way I could do quick ads. So whatever I, I got is what I got. I do it from the iPad. I stream from my phone, but I do all the other stuff on the side from my iPad. My iPad is, is not functional for modern apps it's an it's literally an ipad 2 not, <laughs> not an air 2 not it's an ipad 2 uh it does not update anymore there is no support for the ios whatever i have on it is all i get to have on it and um i'm surprised it even runs netflix anymore you're all i maxed that shit out years ago oh yeah man oh yeah it's it's it, it's kind of a bummer because there's some apps that i'd like to put on it but i'm like i'm not buying a new ipad to put an app on it so <laughs> See, that's, that's like the opposite of me. I have to, I have to I'm like, Oh, there's a new one. Mine's taking a shit. I got well, yeah, but you're one. drawing on your stuff. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. I'm just watching TV basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's actually, so I don't know if you guys, if you guys uh, focus a lot on doing like digital comics, like putting, if you did comiXology, um, 
but there's a, I've been working with this new, this new company called global comics that has, um, right now only a desktop site for their, for their comics. Uh, but they're in the process of making an app. I've been, I've been working They're They're really great. Uh, they really work closely with the creators to get that. What's stuff the up name? There. Uh, global comics. It's comics with a, with an X. I think they hit me up. They're really great. If you, uh, if you end up, if you end up working with them, um, one of the, one of the original creators will like set up a meeting with you and kind of walk you through everything. They have, um, uh, like campaign banners. So if you have a campaign running, when someone goes to like, look at your comics, it'll say, oh, this is on Kickstarter right now. And like, and then when it ends, it automatically like changes to like, this was funded on Kickstarter. It's really yeah. cool. And you know, I don't know. I, comics, uh, comiXology has just been such a pain for like users and creators that i'm it's well, i heard it just got worse too because like Patton oswald did a tweet like nine tweets about how it sucks or something oh yeah, yeah they, they completely changed everything about it now yeah it's 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 a it's apparently a disaster i don't I, i'm actually on global comics i have stuff on global comics um but i've never attacked the digital market because every time i've done anything with it there is no result i mean it's just this is not worth my time to do this um so i've just all we do digital when we do our kickstarters uh because there's always people like you know in europe that don't want to spend 80 dollars on shipping i'm yeah. like yep i i got you man here we hook you up so we do it through there but as far as just like selling digital anywhere else it's never been uh, a drive for us so Jeez, um, i don't really look at it it's definitely not something that I that that's I mean it's not bringing in you know a ton of income or anything. Yeah. But you know when it when it comes to indie comics you know especially with with what we do with the variant covers and making collector comics it's a lot of times nice. people feel like people aren't you know people don't care as much about reading them and that's why I love the digital comics because if someone buys it there it's because all they want is to read the comic yeah. and as the writer I love that. <laughs> um and it's, oh sure the tables have turned now that you're the big writer star. <laughs> Hey, that's that's also that's something that's going to be changing pretty soon. I am uh, I'm about to take off a couple of hats um, when you know I'm, I'm actually in the process right of right uh, right now of talking to some other writers and bringing some people in to help me finish up these two series, um, and then probably I'm probably going to take a step back from writing. Uh, well, I'll always be a part of the creative process, and like obviously, I've got the whole world of Merc in my head. But we're gonna we're gonna bring in some people, some some real hopefully some big guns. Sweet. Take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of Nei, she just kicked me over a rough for her cover. So that's cool. So that's what? happening. That's happening. What? It's happening. It's happening. I just got a Ebass colored version. Oh, I'm so jealous. I had to pull a lot of teeth for that stuff, though. Oh, I believe it. He's actually, he's hard. He's hard to nail down. Actually, Shannon pulls a lot of teeth. She gets on him. So. I believe that. I don't. I don't have the patience for it. So Shannon does it. He's one I've uh, I've six Sean on him because I'm like Sean, I can't it, it's not working you gotta you gotta take this one yeah like we gotta have it but I can't deal with it so you do it mm -hmm. <laughs> one more hat it's the e bass hat yeah it. it's the e bass wrangler. <laughs> So what have you got coming up next? Is, is con uh con artist? Con artist is that is that what you have coming out next? Yeah, I have that one's done. I and I think I think all the covers are turned in. I have to actually go back and look. Mm -hmm. Um, I literally I just I've had a hard time finding the time to build the Kickstarter. Uh, all this other stuff comes up. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. I always put everything else first, like everybody else's shit first, and always forget like I have stuff I gotta do. So Shannon's actually taking over the Kickstarter part. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. Designing and doing all that stuff, or just the like customer service and like running it. Uh, like building the Kickstarter stuff. Like I'll still do like the you know the tier designs and stuff, 
Mm -hmm. uh, she'll lick and stick all the all of them together. I just got to build the one, the base one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because she knows how to do everything else. Um. But that's that's like the, been the biggest holdup. We were waiting on two covers, and I I think I have those back now. And in the process, I ended up hiring more people to do covers. And I was like, well, I can just use those for three because we're already working on the interiors for three now. That's definitely I, I try to keep a, keep an arsenal of covers kind of just just in case, you know, you never know when someone's going to fall through. Things yeah. always come up. I have the problem with seeing people's art and I'm like, that would be amazing. Do you want to do it? And when they say <laughs> yes, I'm like, all right, go do it. And I'm like, but yep. I have enough covers. I'll use it later. Just do it. <laughs> Well, that's what I tell people all the time. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, I can't now, but, you know, let me know. Let me know next time you need one. I'm like, I literally always like I will yeah. always have work for you when you're free. Like, put my name there. Yep. I'm getting in that boat. Yeah, I got to get two out because Marissa did a, a exclusive cover for issue two. I did. An artist exclusive cover. Oh, for your like for yourself, Marissa. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Like it's, it's it's her exclusive. It'll go through like different retailers. Very cool. You no, know, just just like how you do it. You do yeah. the you know do the cover and. I think I had I think I had two for you, don't I? One's for persuasion. Yeah, one's for persuasion. Yeah. And the other one is a con artist. That'll be the first one we do. Yeah. Yeah, I like I want, that one. I want your other one on um, chapter four of Persuasion. Okay. You know, the fun part of working on this on the iPad is I can get it all nailed down. And I don't know why I'm going this tight because then I got to turn around and just draw it for real anyways. <laughs> that's a do you is that something that you do usually like do it on the ipad first get get the layout I'll, done and go i'll back do the layout the on the ipad yeah but I'll, I'll literally usually go to like you know this the really really rough step mm -hmm. but on this one i'm just going a little further I gotta say, I'm really, really enjoying just sitting here watching you guys work. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on, Tom. This is why we do it. Like, yeah, Sunday. of course. Yeah, I mean, we we actually we had a couple of weeks that were wonky because of the holidays and then uh, all the football stuff that was going on. And mm -hmm. uh, so this is our first one back uh, after. Uh, uh, oh no, we did one last week because we had the, the critter uh, critter action figure that we did. Yeah, um, I've been running that campaign. Congratulations on getting that funding, dude. Thank you. That was bad shit. That was bad. Toys, thing. toys, toys. Uh, but yeah, Ryan's very pleased. He gets his. He gets to have a toy. Yeah, That's and that just means there's hope for mine. <laughs> oh, so it's not even about me. It's about you. No, it is about you because I get a freaking critter toy. But it just brings <laughs> like I don't think people really understood what that meant for the indie world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I tried to kind of explain now and then when I was on some some live shows and podcasts and stuff that. You know, it's it's so we we see all these big IP that gets all the attention, and um, you know the the little guys like us, we don't always get. Uh, it's not the '90s anymore. It's not when everything you know somebody can put out an IP and it's like, well, there's toys and there's statues, and it's just like, no, nah, yeah. it just doesn't happen. But a lot of it is just perception that whatever the IP happens to be just isn't. Uh, I don't know, strong enough, whatever that the that the market will bear it, but. In this situation, market didn't matter. The fans decided that they wanted yeah. it, and they made it happen. And that should change the perception for anyone that makes merch, whether it's you know licensing shirts or toys or, or whatever it happens to be. If you don't make it, the fans are going to make it, and they're going to get it themselves, and you're not going to get any piece of that IP pie. We're just going to figure out a way to do it ourselves. Um, and, and hopefully... Uh, this will move it. I mean, I, I've seen like uh, executive replicas and loose collector. Um, I've seen they have like some chat uh, 
oh my gosh, what like message boards and stuff like the like it's literally the nineties again, message boards. Um and they had some people talking about the critter figure, like in there, and they were very, very excited that something that they didn't know was actually being made. They were like, Yeah, we've seen all of these things, but we don't know what critter is. And this is really cool that they're branching out into the indie world. Um, so if they were excited, I gotta imagine that by the time we actually get these things in our hands and we can actually, you know, show them to a customer and be like, you can have a critter toy. Uh, we should we should have really a great you know, sort of moment um, of, of revelation for the industry that anything is possible right now. Literally anything is possible. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't require, you know, Hollywood to help you or, you know, Hasbro to help you or anything. There, there are companies out there that you can work with uh, and get this stuff done. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm super excited that it happened. And uh, now I just want it. It just needs to be here now. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. But it I'm is in the tooling out. phase. Like I talked to them like last week and they I, I was like, okay, so push go, push go on the mark on the make the toys now. Uh and they were like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, it's going into the tooling phase. So they'll be actually doing the actual plastic tooling versus uh the the uh 3D printed, you know, prototype that they had. Um right. so it's going into the tooling phase and and I'm hoping that we'll be able to get some pictures like as it goes through some phases that we can show people like how this works. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Um, so if they if they allow us to do that, I will definitely bring the pictures out so people can see it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, really the the hard, the hard part about this is going to be not even the, the making of them. It's going to be the shipping of them because they got to come overseas and then, you know, hopefully it won't sit too long you know, out at sea uh, yeah. before they can get them to land. Cause once they're on land, then we're fine. Then we can just move fast. Um, but uh, that's why, you know, July, August, we're kind of hoping for that, but it, it may end up being depending on the trucking situation, everything. It may end up being like Christmas time, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I got to wait that long. Maybe. I'm Maybe. not a very patient person. I, I, trust me, dude, if it doesn't happen this summer, I'm going to be upset. And I'm going to have to probably just go rent my own truck and be like, look, I'm here. I have my truck. Put my toys on the truck so I can go take care of this problem. There's no trucking. Oh, there's no truck trucking there's problem. Mine. Yeah, there's no trucking problem. I'm here with the truck. We're, we'll be fine. Make it happen. But I will say this. We've already started working on the next one. Nice. You still have to send me that information. Don't be hoarding stuff. What information of what? Who's who's doing it? So I can oh talk I, yeah them. I can send you that. oh sure 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 yeah, yeah yeah I can do that I can do that. They we need to have a talk. I can do that. We, and need I can, we might also need to have a talk. I was about to say yeah I can I can create. Uh, no 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 Murph uh, you guys can't do that. Let us have the toys. You guys are already working on the statues and shit. Give us something okay. <laughs> yeah I'm oh, really yeah, looking Russell, for. Russell. I was actually just talking to to Jamie uh, this week about the statues and. They are um, obviously they they did the the his other property. Uh, they're in the process of getting those done, and that's kind of the, the trial run. And if that all goes well, then we've already got the design for a cat fight statue. No, that one will be sick. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm really excited. Hopefully, we don't have to wait like a year. <laughs> If you run into a trucking problem, just call Russell. I know Russell Wilson, Russell Phillips. Uh, Wilson Russell Brand. Yeah, Russell Which Wilson. Russell we call him? I think. I don't think Russell Brand wants me to call him. <laughs> It'll be my first restraining order from a celebrity, but I'll do it. He can get the word out for sure. <laughs> Bring you on his podcast. I'm sure he'd like to talk about comics. He like <laughs> has a does little that, hand into everything. Does he have a podcast too? Oh yeah, Russell Brand. Uh, oh, dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I don't. I've never listened to pod. I don't even know where to start with podcast. Um, but I could listen to him talk shit all day. I only know <laughs> because, uh, well, I follow him on Facebook, so his stuff comes up on Facebook, and then other people post his his you know interviews and stuff that he does. So. I, I never really follow a podcast, but I'm, I follow closely enough to to his 
coattails that I get enough of his stuff. Him, like him and Gary V and, you know, those guys, um, I, I get enough info to know what's going on. Right. But yeah, Russell's, Russell's great when he does talks. He's, mm-hmm. he's uh, a really amazing guy. So well, he's, he's crazy smart. Like yeah. he's, he's really, he's, he's an activist. Like I, you, you never would have guessed it, you know, with, with like those first like roles that he got known for that. He's just such a, such a involved person as far as like world events. Well, yeah, he's yeah. totally modified his entire being from what he used to be. You know, he used to, he used to do drugs and alcohol and, you know, mm-hmm. um, and he's just, he's modified himself completely. So yeah, he's a very interesting. Has, uh, interesting Jim guy. Noble been listening to this conversation? Is he on? Uh, I haven't seen him today. No, oh, I was going to say he should be listening. This is what adults talk about <laughs> when they're on shows. <laughs> talk about Russell Brand. Russell All Brand. Right, what's the backstory here? <laughs> uh, oh, when the backstory is, on, is we talk about ass and titties. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, based clown porn and whatever else happens to come out of his mouth. Clowns, The Simpsons, the '80s, and boobs. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm more myself whenever I'm with Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. hmm. Now I'm gonna have to rethink what I think of that. Love you. We can get into the ass and I mean, <laughs> we all know our market. <laughs> exactly. One of my dogs is trying to get into something. All I hear is scratching, 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 scratching. I'm sure you guys can hear it now, too. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I can hear it now. That's Ollie trying to get into something. Oliver! He will scratch until he digs his way to whatever he wants, whereas Ollie just looks at it, stares, and growls at it until someone pays attention that he wants that thing. I'm not getting it myself. But I want it. I want you to come get it for me too. My editor has a uh, has a corgi, and the dog will just literally sit and stare at like a, a I don't know what you'd call it, but basically the, the 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 table that the TV sits on, and it's got like some shelves and stuff in it, and yeah. he will just sit and bark at it, just endlessly. Rap rap rap. Just looking at the at the like the door on that cabinet because he assumes something's in there for him, uh, and he'll just he'll just go forever. And then they'll open the door and there's nothing in there. And they'll close it and he'll go again. <laughs> He's like, "There's got to be something in there, guys. I know there's something in there. I've seen you put things in there." Yeah. He's insane. No, Chewie doesn't do that, but he'll do, he knows what he wants and he sees what he wants. But if it's out of like if he has to climb on top of something to get it, like a toy box, yeah. all of their toys are in boxes. He will not put his head in that toy box. He will see what he wants and growl at it and stare at it until you come and get it an inch from his face. He's like, I'm going to make you work for this shit. And then you're going to play with me. <laughs> get a dog, they said. It will be fun, they said. Most of the time it is. Or at least in my experience. Of course, my dog were three times, four times the size of yours, I'm sure. Your dog shat bigger than my dogs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm over here with my cats. I got one that's just sitting here. He's just been snoozing this whole time. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit about anything I'm doing. No, my dogs dogs sit next to me. Uh, Bonnie has when I'm sitting at my desk, she has to sit with me in a chair or she has to lay in her bed. So I got her um, a separate bed to lay next to my desk. And every time I sit over here, she just lays in her bed. <laughs> warms my heart. Well, at least it warms your heart. It pisses me off. I'm like, go. I, I, I love my dogs. Like, there's literally 12 other people in the house right now, and they will yell at me. To play with them. Marissa knows. Marissa's seen what Chewie does firsthand. 
Yeah, I know. Man, that day he let me pick him up. That's the scariest day of my life. <laughs> this is <laughs> like, the best day ever. I'm like, I don't, I don't trust this. This is awesome, but I don't trust it. <laughs> He's actually been really good. Yeah. Like he hasn't been pissed off at anybody and like growl, like showed his teeth or telling you like, hey, I'm gonna bite your face off. He hasn't done that in months. <laughs> well, he's got uh, he's got a a condition. His brain is literally deteriorating. Aww. So, and he's got Tourette's. So he can go from "I love you" to "I'm gonna bite you" in a second and a half. And that's what he used to do. Like if he didn't know you, and you try and touch him, you got about a split second before he bites your hand off. And now he jumps on everybody and just loves them. He'll like sit in random people's laps that he's never seen. It's like, I like you today. So there we go. April's done. Boom. Yep. Yeah, I can't Adam. sell mine. It's on an iPad. That's what she did. <laughs> you could sell the iPad. Do you know how much original art is in this iPad then? <laughs> Man, you can sell the so iPad for probably 250000 Sure. Noise. So Albert likes it. Yeah, great work, April. That is beautiful. Thank you. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> well, this price includes shipping, so if anybody wants it. Albert, it's out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You pun you. <laughs> so we got about 10 minutes left here before we uh wrap this all up. Um, why don't you give them the uh uh the social media spiel, give them the last pitch for Miss Meow. Um again, four days left, four-ish days left, guys. So you got some time. Go check out the campaign. Um and uh, we'll put this up here, doink, uh, and uh, we'll let uh, Murphy tell you what the, what it's all about. Yep, Miss Meow number four uh, is issues Second Life. Um, this is going to run until Friday at 4 p.m. Come join us on the Miss Meow Facebook page, and I'm going to do a live stream for that last hour. We're going to do a giveaway, um, and you know we're just going to we're going to have some fun. Um, if you Follow us on Kickstarter. We do a campaign every single month. Uh, there's Death Rage number four is coming next month. And then Born of Blood uh, number two, that's written by our new writer, is going to be uh, in April. April. <laughs> forgot, forgot what day it was for April. <laughs> um, and I also want to, so we actually just started, I'm just trying this out. We just started a Patreon. Um, it's an over 18, which I didn't realize that if it's over 18, then people can't search for you on Patreon. I'm going to put the link in the comments. Oh, I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't like just go to Patreon and search Merck publishing. Um, so we, we put a, we put a link up, uh, what we're going to do Patreon exclusive comics. You get a look, um, an inside look at making, making of the comics, and then you'll get to see cover previews before they're revealed. Kind of like what we're doing right now with Ryan. Um, Yeah. We're on all the social media. Search yes. Merck Publishing, Merck Comics, and then that'll link you to everything else. And you can find me pretty much at Merck Play anywhere on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. There you go. There you go. I Yeah, I did not know the, the 18 or older thing either. I didn't either. Uh, uh, that's there you go, my Patreon. Looks like I'm going to fans only. <laughs> only fans time. Yeah, that, that place. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just searched. Yeah, I can't find Ryan Kincaid. Yeah, it's you can't search for people uh, over 18. They have to actually have the link to find you, which yeah, is that's crazy. So, th actually, OnlyFans is the same way, too. I think I don't think there's any searching in OnlyFans. Like, you have to have the link. I mean, I yeah, think that's, that's probably safe, safer for people. Yeah, I mean, knowing, knowing what's on only, I mean, OnlyFans is basically Patreon, but it allows all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Except for that one day that they were like, oh, we're not going to do this anymore. And everyone was like, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're out. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my gosh. It's All right, guys. Easy. Thank so, you for having me on, guys. This has been fun. I really love watching you guys work. And of course. Of course. Uh, I was thrilled to have you on. Um, and we'll definitely work on getting you back, uh, especially since you're you're basically always live with something. Yep. <laughs> So we'll keep an eye on, on what you're doing. And, uh, uh, if we ever have a spot and it's and you want to join us again, you're welcome to do it. <coughs> As always, I'll have a I'll have a big announcement to make in April. That oh, would be would be fun to come on and talk about. So oh, you can't promote your wedding on on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was actually just thinking about I was uh, since we've been on here. I was thinking about your birthday party that we came out for uh, last year. Last year, um, my thirtieth birthday is in October. There you go. Yeah, I think I, I think I might need to do like a big like a big bash. I don't know big what dirty thirty. Is. Yeah, it's it's my birthday's right around New York Comic Con, so I'm thinking about just doing something. Probably not on the weekend because we'd all be screwed I'd, I'd, go I'd, I'd, I'd go, but i'd probably want to kill you i'd go <laughs> but i'd be like fucking murphy but so be yeah. hung over at new york comic-con <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm excited for that it's crazy shaking your head tom you didn't know i wasn't 30 <laughs> no i had no idea i know yeah. i don't i listen i don't know how old anyone is i'm terrible at that game um all I know is that I'm the elder statesman of basically everybody that I know uh, in comics for the most part with, with rare exception. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I just turned 50 last year. So, you know, I've, it's like, I've always been the young one and I'm like, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit sad that it's not going to be like, like you got all these like Marissa's coming in now that are coming in like new. <laughs> all young, of these Marissa's. Stepping into the, into the comic scene. And I'm just, Dang. I'm just one of the, one of the regular old, adult people now <laughs> we're, we're, the, we're the adults now we're not yeah. the, we're not the new kids on the block we're the adults yeah, i don't know how Marthy, i feel about I, it i'm only a year younger than you so i'm not you're you're a kid that's <laughs> yeah one year, one year sorry i'm not 30. all like, these marissas i love that that's a great quote <laughs> my sister called me jurassic the other day and she goes well i was like uh she said something and i was like uh okay she goes, well, you know, you're basically 30, right? And I was like, yeah, and. <laughs> Shawnee, I've been saying that for a while. I'm one of those, like, scared of being 30. I've always kind of been like, oh, let's see everything I can squeeze into my life before I hit 30. So I can just be like, look at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, did that shit. Yep, did that shit, too. Yeah. Well, I'd say you're, uh, you're, you're doing it right based on uh, what I'm seeing here. So congrats again on uh, the success of everything um super impressed keep it going uh we definitely are happy to have you back anytime um what is your convention schedule do you know right now that you can tell anybody i do um we are like i talked about a little bit earlier it's it's a lot harder to do cons as an indie comic company you've just got you've got so much stuff that you need to bring um so i'm pretty much going to try to keep it down to doing one like one every month uh we're local to indiana so obviously i'll be at indiana comic con and then planet comic con uh we are possibly going to go back to megacon uh, that was actually the first convention that we did uh well no, a comic palooza was, but Megacon was our first like big con that we did. So I, I'm really, really gonna help uh, try to get back there. Um, Dallas Fan Expo, C2E2. Um, fingers crossed. I'm trying to get us into Dragon Con. I know that's like a long shot. Um, and then the last one will be my birthday con, which is the New York Comic Con. Comic Palooza awesome. just opened their uh, Artist Alley applications. When is it's usually in May? And, mm -hmm. uh, actually, they've got it July seventeenth. No, no, no. Yeah, July seventeenth and eighteenth. I think this year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifteenth, fifteenth through seventeenth. I'm still waiting for CTVT to open theirs. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, dude, that shit's in like six months. I kind of need to know, <laughs> but I can't apply yet. <laughs> Yeah, we'll probably do C2E2 this year. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't do it last year. Just I didn't know what was going to happen being two weeks from Christmas. Um, but I like the August date. So um, Midwest folks, we will probably be at C2E2 this year. 
You said you guys are local. That you're in Illinois. I'm Michigan. Michigan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's it's only like four hours. Four mm -hmm. hours. Drive. Super easy. Um, and Chicago, basically, we were. I was in, before the divorce. I was in Chicago for like five years ish, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So it became kind of our home base. We did C2E2 every year. Um, a lot of the little local things as well. So um, we did we did C2E2 in 2019. That was our last one. 2020 didn't happen, and then 2021. No, no, no. 2020 did happen. That was the. It was the last con that I that I did. You're right. Um, You're mm -hmm. right. That was right before everything crapped out. Yep. Yeah. Because Se Seattle was just. It was two weeks after, and so that was that. That two weeks, everything all of a sudden, you were like, "Oh, what's gonna happen?" Yeah. And I right. remember it was the last time that the last time that I I, I hugged people that I didn't live with. That's yeah. Not, but still, it feels like it. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a good show. Um, I was there in in December to just kind of roaming around. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was very different to be on the other side of the table. Um, it was I I wasn't used to it like at all. I didn't know what to do. It's like what do I what do I do now? Where do I go? What's what's I, what's the point of this whole thing? I do that every year for San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. My dad's always a vendor, so I've got my brother and I switch off on on who gets who gets to go. That's that's my con that I just go. And experience mm -hmm. uh, and it's i do i do love being on the other side and i feel like i feel like you know we can do a better job if we know what it's like on the other side of the table for sure yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely uh all right guys that's gonna do it for us uh thanks to everybody who came in and and hung out with us shawnee thomas thank you uh, thank you albert and so on uh big thanks to murphy for chilling with us showing us all about uh miss meow again guys you got four days ish left uh, you're definitely going to crack 700 backers. That's no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, what's your highest backer count you've hit so far? Uh, on Born of Blood number one, the biggest campaign we've ever done, we had uh, 1,300 and Dang. some change. Nice. Which was, yeah, that one That one was, I mean, uh, that blew all of our minds. <laughs> what, what do you attribute that to? Do you have any thought process on why that one blew up? Well, so it's we had we had an incredible roster of, mm -hmm. of covers. Um, it was the first campaign that we ever did a campaign video on, okay. which I unfortunately didn't get uh, get around to doing for this one. Um, but I, I'm working on it for the next one. Uh, the campaign video was was real was real big. Um, I mean, we had thousands of views on that. Wow. Um, and then the the writer uh, for that Dolan, he was I mean, he was everywhere promoting it like he's he knows like youtubers and so i'm definitely i'm hoping that i can bring him on to be more of like you know more of just a part of merc and kind of do that for everything mm -hmm. um because you know I'll, I'll get on and do these shows but i i don't i don't watch youtube <laughs> so like that whole that whole like yeah. end of things is so lost on me yeah i'm so. the same way i'm the same way it's yep. I'm, I'm social media uh inept for the most part. So, uh, anybody that can, anybody that helps us out is always uh, appreciated. So, um, yeah, thanks for being here. We, we appreciate it. Congrats on the success. Uh, guys, we'll be working on, uh, coming back to you next week. We'll let you know who that might be. Uh, and, uh, we'll be back for episode 20, uh, next time through. So, uh, we'll see y'all have a good week and we'll